All right, you guys, what is up, everybody? Today we are coming at you with another e-scouting video. This one is gonna be a little bit different. Me, myself, and I was very fortunate this year. First year putting in for New Mexico, first year with an elk tag in my pocket. I drew a late season rifle elk hunt in New Mexico. So that is what we are gonna be scouting today. We're gonna head over to onyx.com to do all of our scouting today. So. This isn't an area that I haven't personally spent a lot of time, and so that's why we are gonna dive into it here on the computer. So what I have pulled up so far is the area we are gonna be hunting. Um, I am on the satellite view. No layers applied just yet, just kinda getting a look over the unit itself. Um, looks like we have a pretty big mountain range system going on where I think we are gonna be spending the majority of our time. So if you head over to the top left, area this is where you can apply your layers um, so if i scroll down to the new mexico state you can toggle all of these on and off you have your private lands your government lands your game management units and also new mexico possible access so we're going to go ahead and turn on the private lands we want to make sure we know where those are at the government lands and also the game management unit layer. So as you can see, it's added a ton already. Our map is starting to make more sense. All of this green you are seeing right here is um, wilderness. Um, another great thing is if you guys don't have Onyx yet, make sure to go get it and use code HUSH. So everything I'm doing here on the desktop version is also transferring to my phone as well. So. Obviously not gonna have my desktop out in the field, but this is a great way to do it from home. So let's take a look at this area and see what we can find. So right off the bat, you can see that it's primarily all wilderness, which is A-OK -okay for us. It's all huntable. Um, kind of on the borders, outskirts, you can see some private land areas here. There's only really a couple areas of private land within the unit, but I don't think that's gonna cause us much need for concern. So another, like when I'm looking at an area like this for the first time, first checklist in my head is access. So it all looks pretty great, it all looks really good, but how am I gonna access these areas? So if you go back up here to the top left on your layers, um, you scroll past New Mexico and you go towards the end, you'll see a little area called Trails and Rec. Go ahead and open that up and that's gonna have trails layer, recreation site layer, meaning like campgrounds, things of that sort, and then also motorized roads and trails. So if I turn, if I start turning these on, you'll start to see the map making even more sense. So this trail slope thing is just like diving in, it's something I just saw for the first time and it's a pretty cool layer because it'll actually show you, as you can see here, the incline of the trails. Green meaning easy, red meaning steep. So with those layers applied, you can already start to see, all right, this is my unit, this is the area I wanna hunt, it's public land, and this is now how I can access it. So if you look at this giant mountain range here, there is not a ton of motorized access, which is not necessarily a negative thing or a positive thing. In my eyes right now, as I'm looking at it, it's kind of more of a positive thing because all these trail sites over here um, look like it's gonna take a hike. So it might wean out some people that are just there, you know, to hunt off the road. So another cool thing is, is if you go to the trail itself, like this trail right here, and you click on it, it'll bring up information about said trail. It'll tell you the length, and it'll tell you what's allowed on that trail. So this is a non-motorized hike or horse trail, which it looks like most of these trails are. So I think personally, right off the bat, the game plan is gonna be to take one of these motorized roads here, maybe establish a base camp at the end of these roads and then pick a trail to hike off of. So we know we're gonna either access from here or possibly from up here. So next, what I'm gonna do is turn on, in the bottom right, there's a satellite, a hybrid, and a topo option. If you go topo, obviously, you're just gonna see the topography of the landscape. A lot of people like to look at it just topographically at first to kind of get the idea of where the valleys are, saddles, pinch points. 
things of that sort. But me personally, I like the hybrid because you get the best of both worlds, right? You get to see kind of the landscape with the trees, the open faces, and then you also have an idea for the topography. So that in culmination with the new 3D feature, if you guys haven't been using it, it is awesome. You can be looking at all these topo lines, all these trails kind of getting a feel of what you think it's gonna look like. But when you hit that 3D button, it takes it to a whole new level. Now I am getting the feeling for the landscape. And you can see with these trail slope colors, they're actually pretty accurate. The green seems to be on a flat plane, yellow, a little bit more steep, and then, and then the reds obviously looking definitely more steep. So now we have an idea of the layout of the land three-dimensionally, and there are trails spread out all through this unit. So I'm gonna switch back to 2D real quick, just like that, and I'm gonna start broad. And so first thing that I see is this motorized road right here is kind of bordering the access to all of this. So what point do I personally wanna start off with? And I'm looking at this point right here. So this motorized road comes off the main road and leads to this trail, which doesn't look super easy hiking. But if you can get to this point, right off the bat in my eyes, it offers the most glassing. And I think that's gonna be huge for these later season, this later season hunt. Obviously the elk aren't gonna be rutting. They're gonna be all herded up post rut, they're gonna be feeding. So we're gonna be primarily looking today at south slopes for feeding with a drainage in the bottom, preferably that doesn't have a trail. So if you take this motorized road right here, park the rig here, hike up this trail, you'll see some switchbacks here, might get a little tough hiking here, but once you get to this point right here, all of this is glassable. And not only from that point, but you can hike this ridge and really glass into all of these basins. So let's take a look at that on the 3D. So it looks like that is a high point here and you won't right off the bat necessarily be having to hike too far from your rig. So just as a scouting, when we get out there, let's, let's name this spot A. This is where maybe I wanna take the first part of the day when we're scouting and just go look over into this valley. I like this valley a lot because all of this stuff right here, there are no trails around and this is kind of just get a good idea for what's going on. So hike up to this point right here, add a waypoint. And then what you can do is obviously scroll down through all of the icons and we are gonna go to glassing area. So we'll save that potential glass A, we'll put that in group A. So this is right off the bat coming into the unit. This would be a good spot to drive up, take a quick 30 minute hike and just kind of go through this ridge. So starting here, glassing over to here, getting an idea of that bowl. And the nice thing is everything that I'm doing right now on the desktop version is transferring to my phone on the mobile app. So I'll have these maps saved prior to going out on my phone and all of these waypoints will be there. So we'll start in group A, we'll glass here, potentially work our way down the ridge and glass on this point as well as a good starting point. And once again, we're kind of looking for these south slopes um, that are good for feeding. Like this is a really long one right here, really big open south facing slopes that they can feed. Um, that one kind of has a trail at the bottom, but we're looking for a south slope like that with a drainage in the bottom that particularly doesn't have a trail. So if we switch back to 2D here, there's our glassing point A. Another good spot that's in my mind is over here in the northern end of the unit. If you look really close, dude, there are no trails through any of this. So that's, that looks like it's gonna be a poke. And right off the bat, I'm not seeing a ton of water. If you swap over to Topo again, 
This is a way to see water better, I think, than if you're looking at the satellite, because it all starts to blend in. And these are all water sources, so off our glass point A here, it looks as though that there is a creek through the bottom of this drainage. And that's just something we're gonna have to verify when we get out there, if there's water there or not. Um, because obviously if you switch back over to the satellite, you can't really tell. But historically, the topo was saying that there is a creek there. So that is something that we'll have to verify as well. So I'll just go ahead and drop a waypoint there. Water source, we'll make that in blue. Another thing I like to do as well, so let's just go ahead and label this real quick. What I like to do is I'll leave that water in blue. And then if we verify there's no water there, instead of just deleting it, mark it as red and say no water. So in the future, if I'm looking at that map and I see that spring, I'll know that there's no water there. Same thing with the glassing points. Like if I really like this glassing point, I'm gonna go ahead and edit this. I'll make all my glassing points while I'm doing e-scouting. Um, a certain color will go with purple and if it turns out to be a good glassing point or we're seeing bowls from that area we'll change it to green and if it's not that great of a glassing point and it's just you can't see that much land we'll turn it to red so we're leaving these waypoints on there but we'll know if they're good or not so in the future if i'm looking and i'm like oh that looks like a good glassing point oh i marked it red it must not be that great i really am liking this one too because if you work your way down this ridge up to this higher point here i'm gonna go ahead and mark another one there you have view down this basin down this basin and really 360 all around you through here. So we'll mark that one as well, save that. So right off the bat, I kind of have a plan. I've only been on my computer for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and I already have an area I want to check out. So that's basically the name of the game here. Um, it's always great to do this because without even putting boots on the ground or making that long drive to New Mexico, I can look over this whole unit and start making game plans like I am. So another, so let's establish another glassing point because I feel like that is gonna be the biggest thing when we get out there is just covering ground, getting to high points and trying to find where these elk are and what they're doing. So depending on how this is getting into these group A points, I kind of have the north section covered. I don't absolutely love it. There's trail all the way around, but that's just gonna be the thing out here is you're gonna to have to bang these trails and then maybe get off a little trail. We'll mark this spot too, right down here, going back in time just a little bit. We'll mark that as where to park. So now we have our parking point established, our trail that we we're gonna hike to glass here and here, potential water source, and that's every, this is all things we're gonna have to verify once we get down there. So let's go ahead and establish a plan B or another area. So that's kind of the more north central area there. It looks like this roadway will get you here. And if you hike up this trail, this to me looks like a good spot to check out, mainly because there's one, two, three, four, five, six trails that branch off of this location that spread across the unit. And that's kind of a big thing in my eyes. So we're gonna go ahead and put this as an access point here. And we'll call this spider access. From this point, you can either go north, south, east, west, and then it even branches off there. And if you look at that in the 3D, that's a great point to be glassing from. So not only is that access to all of these other shoots, but it is also a great glassing point. So we'll add a glassing point there as well. And we're gonna make that purple until we can verify potential glass B. That'll be in group B. Another cool thing to remember as well is once we get up to these points and we glass, a feature that Onyx has is you can add a photo to your waypoint. So say we get to this glass point right here, glass B off of spider access. What I like to do is like look at the best glassing and actually take my phone and do a panorama image of what I'm glassing and add that to the waypoint. So if I glass that at the first of the hunt, towards the end of the hunt, I'm like, well, we could go back up to spider access and glass there, but what did that look like? I click on my glassing waypoint and I can pull up that panorama and look at that glassing point. So that's another huge thing we'll do when we're in the field. And then to access spider access, we're gonna have to park the rigs here and work our way up that trail. So we're gonna add another parking icon here. And this is good 
just to have all saved as well because say I make it up there before Casey or Brian or whoever's gonna be there, I can send them these waypoints and they'll, they'll know exactly where to park and the fastest way to get where I am at. So we're gonna add another parking here. Let's work our way down a little bit south. Um, so as you can see, we're kind of breaking it down. I'm breaking it down along the motorized road system here. So good places to park, get off, check. So we have group A up top, group B right here, and then I'm gonna add a group C down kind of the southern central here. This looks like another great spot too. And we haven't even run into any issues with private land just yet. So we're gonna add another parking, save. And then out of these two trails, I think I am liking, you have one that's in the drainage here. We'll go 3D to get a better look. Yeah, actually both are kind of in the drainage, working their way around this mountain ridge here. We'll do this too, because so group A and group B, right here, group A and group B are kind of on the ridge lines. We'll make group C down kind of in the drainages so you can glass back up. So we'll have a glassing point A from the ridge lines, B from the ridge lines, and then C will be kind of from lower. You can glass up on these south slopes. So it looks all pretty flat over here. So I'm gonna say I would rather take this lower trail and glass up on this ridge and then work our way. We can glass all these flat, flatter hills as well. We're gonna draw a line down this trail and mark it as the trail to take. So now we have, we know to take this trail. So we'll be able to glass back up. 18 minutes just looking at this map, I already kind of have a game plan of what I wanna do. And if you look at it, switching back to 3D hybrid here, I really like where things are going. So right off the bat, we already kind of have a game plan A, a game plan B, and a game plan kind of C here where we're gonna hike this trail and kind of glass butt. Like I said, like 18 minutes on the computer and I already have a plan. I mean, depending on how much time you wanna spend, you can really break down this unit, hop on forums, read about it, and kind of look at the best thing to do. But this is giving me the best possible access and this 3D feature is game changing. Another new feature in the layer libraries, if you go over to map layers, and then you go to layer library, these crop data layers, from 2020. I don't necessarily know if it'll be huge on this hunt, but maybe for you, when you're e-scouting, you can add things like corn, wheat, winter wheat, alfalfa, hay. And these are all ag fields and what they planted. So say um, there were ag fields down here and the elk were kind of coming off the mountain at night, you could pull up exactly what they're feeding and where they're at. So alfalfa obviously would be a huge one. Hay is big. Um, if there were alpha alpha fields here, it would pull them up and you would say that drainage is the drainage to watch. They have everything on here. Rice, grain, cotton, canola, dry beans, peanuts, <laughs> a lot of options, potatoes. So that's another cool uh, map layer that has been added this year. Um, if you're watching this, you probably know or not if that applies to you for this unit. I don't think it's gonna apply. I, it'd be cool if there was an alpha alpha field right here, but I don't think there's gonna be one. <laughs> So that's a really cool feature. So I've only spent 19, 20 minutes on here and I already have some game plans. Um, I'm probably gonna spend a little more time on here and really dive into the unit, um, just like you can. But once again, you guys, if you haven't already, make sure you are hooked up with Onyx. Go ahead and use code HUSH. It is easily one of the best tools we have in our belt for getting boots on the ground without actually even getting boots on the ground. So thanks for watching, you guys. Um, super stoked, this is the first elk tag I've ever had in my pocket, and luckily it's in the state of New Mexico. So you guys are gonna have to wait for those videos, but thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.